Welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial will show how to integrate an MLG2 ProNet with CAN Open interface in an BNR PLC using the Automation Studio software. Additionally, a diameter measurement application is solved by using the basic function outer and inner dimension. To be robust against dirt and vibrations, the high function reserve option is used as well. The first step is to set the node ID directly at the device. The following information can be found in the operating instructions. By using the dip switches from 1 to 6, the node IDs can be adjusted from 1 to 63. In our example, the dip switch number 4 is activated, so the node ID is 8. By using the dip switches 7 and 8, the baud rate can be adjusted. In this example, dip 7 is on and dip 8 is off, so the baud rate for our device is 500 kilobits per second. Power off the device and power it on again to resume the changes of the dip switches. Open the SOPA software to verify the settings done by the dip switches. Drag and drop the MLG2 to the new project window once it is found and click on edit IP address if the IP address of the device is not matching to the IP address of your computer. Follow the steps in the window which pops up. Click on offline in the device panel to change the device to online. When prompted to select read or write parameters, click on read parameters. The device is now online. Click on the group folding bar can open to see the currently used can open node ID and baud rate. The next step is to configure the MLG2 ProNet can open using the Automation Studio software. Open the software, click on online and go to settings. The software will search automatically for PLCs. Once the PLC is found, right click on it and select add to connections. The PLC will be listed in the menu at the left. Rename the connection to the PLC if you like and save. Right click on it, add to connections. Right click on the target PLC and select set IP parameters. Under mode, change the value to enter IP address manually and type in the corresponding IP address. Close the window with OK. Click on New Project and give it a name. Click on Next, select Identify Hardware Configuration Online and click on Next again. In the following window, select the PLC connection created in the beginning of the video from the Active Connections list. Click on Identify Hardware and once the PLC is found, click on Finish. Now the project is created and the hardware setup is done. Click on Physical View at the bottom of the menu at the left. This list will display the connected CAN Open Master. Click on Tools and select Import Field Bus Device to install the EDS file of the CAN Open MLG2. To install the necessary EDS file. To import the MLG2 into the Physical View, use the Device Catalog and type SICK into the search box at the top right corner of the screen. The MLG2 ProNet will be displayed in the results. Drag and drop it to the CAN Open Master in the Tree menu. It is necessary to set the node ID chosen in the dip switches. To do so, right click on the MLG2 ProNet in the Tree menu and select Change Node Number. In this example, for the MLG2 ProNet, the node ID is 8, according to the setup in the beginning of the video. Set the value to 8. Right click on the MLG2 again and select Device Configuration. Under Properties, change the PDO type to Transmit PDO, TPDO. In this application, only the inner dimension and the outer dimension data are necessary. The unnecessary PDOs then are disabled. The transmission type can be configured according to the operating instructions. In this example, the default type is chosen. Click on Apply and select Mapping in the Configuration menu. Set TPDO as a filter to display the functions. In this application, the outer dimension and the inner dimension functions are needed. Double click on OD and ID to add those functions to the PDO mapping. Each transmit PDO has 8 bytes. Since those two functions occupy together 4 bytes out of 8, there are still 4 bytes left. Add system status and queue status to the mapping. This way, 
All the information needed will occupy only one TPDO. Click on Apply. Go to Object Dictionary and look for the index 2261, Performance Options, in the list. Tick it and change the current value to 2 in order to set the device at high functional reserve. Apply the change and close the window by clicking OK. The next step is to do the configuration of the master. Right-click on the Can Open Master and select Device Configuration. Go to Bus Parameters and select 500 kilobits per second as the baud rate. Apply the changes and click on OK. Now, variables need to be created to work with the process data in the PLC program. Click on Logical View at the bottom of the menu at the left. Click on the icon New Object. Select Program, New Program and click on Next. Rename the program. Click on Next. And in the next window, select Structured Text as the programming language. Click on Next, select Assign to CPU and Finish. Once the program is created, double-click on MyProgram.var to access the variable table. According to the operating instructions, the OD, ID and status variables are data type unsigned integer 16. Use the Add Variable icon to add new variables. Type OD into the name field and select unsigned integer 16 as data type. Do the same procedure for the other variables. Click on the floppy disk icon to save the variables. Go back to the physical view and double click on MLG2 Pronet in the tree menu to display the mapped process data variables. Click on the process variable field to assign the connections to the variables. Click on the Transfer icon to transfer the configuration to the target. The compiling process can be seen in the Output window. Confirm the pop-up window with OK to proceed with the transfer. The PLC will then reboot. After the PLC reboots, click on the Monitor icon to activate the Monitor mode. The assigned functions as well as their values will be displayed. Using the OD and ID function allows measuring the inner and outer dimension of objects for example to compare them or to check qualities. This example shows two different wheel models and you see the value for the inner and the outer diameter that changes when the wheel changes. Thank you for watching this tutorial and hope to see you next time.